Hello again. We're in Holy Week and today we're going to look at the confrontation that Jesus experienced during his last week when he was in Jerusalem and spending time in the temple courts between Mark 11, 27 and the end of chapter 12. There are seven incidents that take place between Jesus, the Pharisees, the Herodians and the Sadducees. And while the crowds are swayed and they listen to him gladly, and there are certainly some wise and discerning teachers who engage with Jesus, there's a growing sense of hostility. And Jesus responds in parables and in questions, challenging them back, asserting his authority. The first story is recorded in Mark eleven twenty seven through 33. The Pharisees come to Jesus and question him regarding his authority. By what authority do you do these things? They're referring to Jesus having cleansed the temple. But Jesus answers a question with a question. This is the eighth time he's done this in the Gospel of Mark. I'll ask you a question, he says. By what authority did John baptise? Now this sets the people amongst themselves because they said if we say it's from God then we should listen to him and if we say it's not from God the people who love John will overthrow us. So they give a non-committal response we don't know. So Jesus says well if you won't reply neither will I. Check one. The next story is found in Mark chapter 12 and in it Jesus is the one who's on the offensive and he uses a parable the parable of the owner of a vineyard who rents out to farmers at the time of the harvest he sends a servant to collect some share of the produce but they maltreat him so he sends another servant they maltreat him he sends a third one they are even more violent so he thinks to himself I'll send my son but when they see the son, they say, ah, this is the heir. We'll kill him and then we will inherit the vineyard. Some very perverse thinking going on here. And that's what happens. They kill the son. And as a result, the owner of the vineyard comes and brings judgment upon them. Jesus quotes Psalm 118 verse 32. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief capstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvellous in our eyes. And the Pharisees knew that Jesus was speaking against them. They were the ones who persecuted and even killed the prophets. And now God had sent his own son into his vineyard looking for fruit. And instead he'd been rejected and was about to be killed. Judgment would come as a result. The next story in Mark 12, 13 to 17 finds Jesus under attack again. This time it's a financial matter, a money issue. Tax. Should we pay tax to Caesar or not? They think they've got Jesus in a corner because if he says yes, the people won't take very kindly to Jesus. And if he says no, well then the Roman authorities will have a problem with him because he would be acting seditiously. Jesus asked for a coin. Give me a denarius whose image is on it. Render unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar and give to God the things that belong to God. They are completely astounded. They didn't expect Jesus to answer in this kind of way. Jesus gains the upper hand again. You can imagine the crowds listening to Jesus and amazed at his answer but amongst them were some Sadducees who didn't believe in the resurrection and they decide they're going to ask Jesus a clever little story, so they think. The Old Testament made provision for what was called the Leverite Law. When a man died, his brother had to assume the responsibilities of fathering a child with the widow in order that she may have sons who would look after her and so perpetuate his name. So they imagine this scenario. There's a man and he's married and he dies and he's got a brother. So the brother steps in 
but he dies and there's another brother and he dies and there's another brother and he steps in and he dies and so on until seven brothers have married this poor girl they've all died and then the woman dies and their quite clever question is in the resurrection whose wife will she be jesus puts them in their place you are so wrong he says you don't know the bible and you don't know the god of the bible and his power at the burning bush god says I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are so wrong. Now, amongst the crowd, there were obviously some people who were recognising the wisdom in the words of Jesus and were being won over. And one of them was a teacher of the law. Teachers of the law studied the law because they believed God had spoken through it. And one of the things they liked to do was encapsulate the law in a very simple principle. And they would ask the question, can you summarise the law while standing on one leg? So you had to do it pretty quick because I don't think they had a great sense of balance. Anyway, which is the greatest command? And that was the question Jesus was posed with. Jesus answered, the greatest command is, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind. And the second is like unto it. Love your neighbour as yourself. This summarises the whole law. I don't suppose Jesus did that standing on one leg, but it's very easy and very memorable. The great commands that we still hold highly today and that must shape our life as followers of Jesus. This man evidently loved what Jesus said and praised him for his answer. And when Jesus saw that he'd understood, he commended him and said, you are not far from the kingdom of God. The debate and the discussion had gone to a higher level and no one was willing any longer to ask Jesus questions. They were in awe of him. So Jesus poses a question of his own. It says in the scriptures that David's son is David's Lord. How can this be? He's quoting Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make all your enemies a footstool under your feet. Jesus is going to take that place of authority. He's going to win it but he was going to win it through crucifixion he was going to win it through redemption and that was the way of suffering that took everybody by surprise after a long day's teaching in the temple i think jesus was really weary and he sat down and watched what was going on the temple treasury was there where people brought their offerings and jesus watched as he saw a poor widow come by and put in two small coins. Calling the disciples to himself, Jesus pointed this woman out. There's many wealthy people, he said, who give out of their wealth, out of their abundance. But this woman has given everything she had, her very livelihood. Around the world today, there are few of us who have ever given in the way that this woman gave. We've given out of our wealth. And Jesus commends this woman. Jesus doesn't give out of his wealth. Jesus doesn't tithe or even double tithe. Jesus gave everything, not just his money. He gave himself, his life on the cross. Sacrifice of this kind is very costly. And we're living in days when we are going to be called to make sacrifices. And Jesus says, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and come after me. Let's seek to be faithful followers of Jesus as he takes his step towards Calvary.